How to Talk Religion Without Pissing People Off, next on Atheist Viewpoint. Hello and welcome to Atheist Viewpoint. I'm your host, Dennis Horvitz, and sitting beside me is our illustrious uh, Director of Public Relations, Dave Moscato. Thank you again for joining us. Yeah. Um, you know, when I introduced the show, I said, how to talk religion without pissing people off. And of course, many people in our audience are sitting there saying, but I like to piss people off. Well, you know, uh, you can't always do that. And actually, there are ways to uh, debate correctly, and if I guess if we want to be taken seriously, that's the best way to do it. Um, one thing that uh, one reason why you're on the show today is because you have some you have a program, a series of programs that you want to introduce. Right. Well, we're starting um, a new set of workshops uh, at American Atheists on our YouTube channel, and basically the way this works, uh, they are free streaming online interactive live workshops uh, that you can tune into just on your computer. You just go to YouTube. And uh, using Twitter or Facebook, you can send us your questions during the show, and we'll, we'll answer them during the show. Well, and, and you know, I think, I think it's important now because uh, uh, over the past several years, uh, the movement itself is gaining, is gaining movement. It's gaining a lot of momentum. And uh, the, uh, as, as uh, our president, Dave Silverman, has said many times, uh, the whole idea is to make uh, to normalize being an atheist, but uh, we've got to get out there and we've got to get into the into the discussion. And there are ways there are, are ways to do this. And I know of myself from having uh, been on the internet, I've seen uh, uh, atheists uh, making the same mistakes and pitfalls that people who try to defend their religious points of view uh, make, and uh, it got wind up getting themselves backed into corners that they don't need to be in. So uh, one of the goals, uh, uh, the goals of this workshop, uh, well, why, don't you why don't you tell us actually sure. what they are specifically. So this, uh, what we're going to be talking about today, this workshop about how to talk religion without pissing people off, we actually already did this workshop uh, and it's on YouTube right now. The way the, the software works um, after the live one, YouTube posts it as a recorded video so you can go back and watch it. Um, so if you go to YouTube and you search for how to talk religion without pissing people off, it'll, it'll pop up. Um, but, yeah, I mean, th it's, y there are certain things that you can do that make your, your discussions about religion more effective and more efficient. Um, I want to say, we were talking earlier about um, the, the idea of intentionally not pissing people off, and if you want to be, you know, quote unquote, taken seriously, you have to do that. Right. I want to say there are, uh, there are reasons that you might want to do that, and I mean, pathos, being passionate about it, is part of effective debate. And, right. and that doesn't mean not right. being provocative. Right. right, it doesn't mean not being provocative. Uh, we're absolutely uh, confrontational at American Atheists. We are not going soft. We're not going accommodations. Right. That's not what right. this is about. Right. This is about understanding why and how in the brain uh, people get upset, how, how and why people get emotional when they're talking about religion, so that you can do this intentionally or uh, if, you, if you want to, and you can avoid doing it when you don't want to rather than accidentally upsetting people. Right. Um, so that's, that's what this workshop that we did is about. We're going to kind of uh, just kind of summarize it, kind of walk through it today um, so that you'll have uh, an understanding of what these are going to be like, and then you can go to the YouTube channel if you want to watch the entire thing. Well, in, in any case, uh, uh, in, your, in your PowerPoint presentation and, and on, uh, on YouTube, uh, you, you cover uh, six definitions, and we're not, we don't have time to go into them all, but... Um, uh, perhaps you should uh, 
make the distinction, say, between, uh, first of all, we can rule out what a quarrel is. A quarrel is, is not a, a, an argument in the, in the... Right. Well, this yeah, argument has a very specific definition right. of what we're talking about. It's, it's a, a series of premises followed by a conclusion. It's a, it's a term in logic, as opposed to a discussion, which is much more loosely informal. informal. And uh, that's really what this workshop is about, is discussing religion. Uh, not not officially structured debates with an audience and a moderator. And right, all that. because because the chances are you're you're going to have you're, the, the chances are greater that you're going that if you discuss it at all, it's going to be with someone who has had no formal debate training. Right, and, and a, fr a friend or a coworker, uh, right. whatever. Yeah, and, and we and yeah. to elucidate the position as much as it is to convince anyone. Mm -hmm. I think. Right, and uh, we will be doing a future workshop on formal debates, um, but but this one is about just. Uh, informal discussion and I uh, just want to uh, mention also that uh, as we said you can you can go to this to this on YouTube mm -hmm. and uh, we, we just don't have enough time to to go into the entire uh, well it takes but actually on YouTube it's two hours and 45 yeah, this, minutes. this was our first one and we right. were we were still figuring out there were a couple technical things and it went very long we the Q&A went very long uh, but yeah the the video on YouTube is two hours and 45 minutes or so in the future, they'll be much closer to an hour. Okay. So, now, uh, I in your in your uh, outline of, of uh, informal debates and and, uh, and discussions, you you mention uh, we have a whole list of about ten items of what to do and what not to do, including including uh, be patient and be kind and 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 to think of them as a partner, not an not an opponent. Um, but uh, you know, last week's show we were discussing Ray Comfort and his ambush, uh, his ambush uh, interviews. And it, 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 the reason I mention that is because I'm seeing on this list where you say, say "Don't let them machine gun." Mm -hmm. So machine gunning is a term that I use, and I don't know if this is original to me or not. But um, for basically switching from one argument to another argument to another argument, right at the point where you've been shown incorrect about something, and it's time for you to concede right. that point. So. Really, what, what should happen is when somebody explains to you why you were wrong about something and shows you the evidence, and uh, uh, if you are really all about getting to the bottom of something and the truth behind something, the logical next step is to say, oh, thank you for correcting me. I understand now. I was wrong. I won't ever use that argument again with anyone because I understand that it's not a good right, one. Right. But what uh, often happens in religious discussions is right before you get to that point, uh, the religious person will just say, "Okay, well, well, what about the fact that you nothing can't, you know, so, you, something can't come from nothing?" When uh, just two seconds ago they were talking about a completely different line of reasoning. Or the classic, "Why are you so angry?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and I mean, right? That's that's just another reason, you know, uh, an attack on atheism, uh, that as, as though that has anything to do with whether God exists or not. Right, but you know, the thing is, you you have listed here uh, if they use the term uh, use a term. Um, Ask them what they understand it to mean and to justify why. But of course, y you realize that if you're going to start, if they start discussing what they mean by the word God, that basically will could easily take up the entire discussion. Sure. Because that's, uh, you know, that's part of the, that's, that, I think that's part of the whole misunderstanding anyway. Right. And I mean, having, having a good understanding of what you're trying to, to say exists or doesn't exist uh, is necessary before you can really get into this discussion. If you don't have a, a shared understanding of what you're talking about, then you're not going to be able to convince anyone of anything. And, you know, uh, w the thing that I think illustrates that is because, because you and I were just talking, uh, I think the other day, or maybe it was yesterday, uh, about the term igno agnostic. I, as I G uh, Yes, as opposed to agnostic. Right. And, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, the agnostic position is that you, since you can't define the term God, we can't address it. Right. That there are just so many definitions of the word God, it's just not agreed upon enough to have any, any clear coherence that makes it worth saying that I believe in this or I, I'm not convinced that this exists. Right. And so I think how that, that definition applies to this case is, and as we said the other day, that basically when theists and atheists have discussions, the one thing they agree to disagree upon is the idea of agency. Right. So, um, so I think uh, it, that might be a good way as to how to define God so that you're not, you know, that you're not bogged down in defining God for the rest of the discussion. Right. And I mean, well, it, it, I hate to say it depends because then, you know, right. you get no, no, of course. Right. But, um, right, I, you don't have to be a metaphysical naturalist to be right. an atheist, although I think it's fair to say that 
pretty much every atheist, at least in our culture in, in the United States, is a metaphysical naturalist as well. But uh, right, we don't believe that there's any kind of agency behind things that happen. Uh, there's, it's not like there's, you know, everything happens for a reason. We don't believe that. Right. Um, or you know that the universe was created with some intelligent intent behind it. It just happened. Um, it's the same thing with why life is here. It's because chemicals were following the laws of physics, and that's just what happened. Okay, I want to I want to move on, but uh, okay. But one more thing I'd like to touch upon is uh, where you mentioned offer further resources and get their contact information. Right. So a discussion, the way, the way I talk about it in this workshop, it's not a one-time thing necessarily. Right. You're not going to change somebody's mind or their thinking in an hour or in an afternoon. You have to keep it going. I'm in several... I was going to mention right, that. You've got uh, several... Yeah, several ongoing email discussions with, with people who have asked me questions and then they read it and, and my response and then a week later they email me again with more questions and this can go on you know, for months and that's just how it works. Pe people sometimes, often I, I will say, uh, convert to a religion in, an, in a single emotional instant, mm -hmm. but people generally don't leave religion that way. Usually it's a very long process, sometimes years of reading and watching YouTube videos and uh, talking to atheists, and this, that's part of the process. I, I have to tell you that I've seen several samples of your discussion on Facebook, mm -hmm. and you basically are very patient, which I think is, is great, probably more patient than I would necessarily <laughs> be. Um, now, you have a page here devoted to discussion advice, and again, I, we don't have time to go into all of them, but uh, one thing I think, of course, is very important is don't bring up an argument unless you know it pretty well. Well, I mean, that's just good advice, I think, for, yeah, general, for whenever anything. you're trying to debate about anything. But, uh, I mean, obviously, if your if uh, discussion partner, I, I don't want to say opponent because it's not a debate, right. but if your discussion partner brings up uh, evolutionary biology or cosmology or something that you don't really know much about at all, right. um, it's okay to say, you know, I don't really yes. know anything about that. Uh, let's find somebody, a professor, somebody who can answer those questions. Um, it doesn't mean God did it just because I can't answer your Right, question. and I think one thing that's very important for, I think, atheists and, or anyone who is taking, say, the scientific side of a discussion is I, I don't know is a perfectly legitimate answer. Right, it's true. That's, that's something that a lot of religionists just have a real problem with saying is there's, they want an answer even if it's wrong, even if it's demonstrably wrong. Well, not only that, but they will use your ignorance of a specific thing as, as evidence that you can't defend a position or that you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Not so much that you can't defend a position. Not just wrong. that you're wrong, but that God did it. Which that God is, did that's, it. Right. That's just a fallacy. Right. Um, but the other main thing I want to talk about on, under this discussion sure. as part of the workshop is ask lots of questions. Yes. So you should be listening most of the time. The idea is really to let your discussion partner talk themselves out of belief and just you ask nudging questions every once in a while to keep, to keep it going in the right direction. And asking lots of questions is kind of a flattering thing. So you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're, right. you're doing the, the kind of the polite, nice thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's one way to, to point out a fallacy uh, where you, it, you tell them that's fallacious and here's why. And there's the other one where you can say, well, isn't that fallacious or doesn't that not make sense because of blah, 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 and you just frame it as a question. And that way it lets them kind of talk you through it and once they start doing that often they'll realize you know actually that doesn't really make sense <laughs> right and, and, and there's also there's nothing wrong with conceding uh, when your partner makes a point if they're right they're right sure and that it doesn't matter who makes the point right if it's a if it's correct that's the bottom line w nobody we don't own the truth right right okay um, so I, I'm again. I'm, I, I want to apologize because we, we I'm, I'm rushing. We'll have to rush through this, but I, I think that what we what we want to do is give you a taste, basically, of of what this particular discussion is about, and and kind of an idea of what's coming up. And uh, again, um, if you want more of this type of stuff, uh, much more detail on each of these, uh, you can just go to our YouTube channel and watch the entire workshop. Right. Um, and again, uh, I, 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 you know, there, there are things, I'm, I'm just going to run this down sure. very quickly. Uh, one, of the, one of the sections is understanding belief, uh, belief, belief versus knowledge, um, uh, you know, why, not, why does something happen, not what. Um, you, yeah, well, that why not what is one that comes up a lot, and this is just a fallacy also. It's a straw man where they change the question uh, when they're answering based, uh, differently from what you asked them. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I mean, often when you say some, to somebody, well, you know, why do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? And they'll say, well, 
I believe that Jesus rose, from, and that, I mean, they, they won't give you a because answer. They'll just tell you more about, well, Christianity says that this. And it's like, that's not, that's not I'm not asking you what you believe. I know what you believe because yes. I'm familiar with Christianity. I'm asking you why you think that's true. And that, that's something that often comes up, and I, it's just something to watch for. Right. And, and I, I, I've known from personal experience that, for instance, sooner or later, they always play the faith card. Right. And actually, Richard Dawkins, and I believe this was in The God Delusion, um, said that uh, eventually every single argument for religion comes to faith. I right. mean, that's, that's just when, when you exhaust everything else, you're going to end up there. Absolutely. Because, I, I mean, I, I have... I have defined religion as, uh, of course, it, obviously a generalization, but I've just defined religion as uh, absolutism followed by excuses. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't, ultimately, it doesn't matter how liberal your religion is or how liberally you interpret your religion, at some point for it to have any valid validation at all, you've got to have the absolutist basis that there is a God, that there's agency. Right. And, um, and, uh, uh, I, yeah, I think I, I think uh, I mean a major difference here is uh, just that uh, often religionists will will erroneously confuse um, belief and knowledge as though they're synonyms, yes. and they are not synonyms. Uh, belief is a is a necessary condition of knowledge, but it's not a sufficient condition of knowledge. And I actually uh, will be doing another entire workshop about epistemology where I cover uh, what makes up knowledge and the difference between knowledge and faith and um, and the empiricism and, and so on. But um, yeah, you, if, you're, if you're having a discussion with somebody, that's something to watch for is where they say, well, uh, is, they say something as a, as a fact-based statement when it's in fact really just what they believe. So if they say like, well, I know for, you know, just like you ask them what, about their religion, they say, well, I know for is one thing that Jesus loves me or something like that or that Jesus uh, can save you from hell. And you say, well, that's, that's not something you know, even though you're telling me that you know that. That's just something that you believe uh, because that's your religion. And there's a big difference there because a belief is something that could change or that you could be wrong about. Right. And, I, and again, to just kind of move on, but mm -hmm. just to, to, again, give you a, a, little, bit, uh, a little bit of what, what of the other items in the list under understanding belief, uh, you're talking in practice, religious often defend deism, which I guess is sort of kind of the idea of ultimately you're going to that single absolute right and, th and this I mean this just comes up all the time you'll have a discussion with somebody about why they believe their religion and they'll start telling you like for example they're a Christian or a Muslim or something and they'll start telling you that well something could not have come from nothing right. that's an argument for deism that is not an argument for your particular religion right and if you're trying to get to the bottom of why they believe what they believe you have to get them to justify their belief in specific things so if they believe in baptism that you have to be fully submerged or something start asking them about that say why do you believe they have to be fully submerged is that necessary? Like, how do you know that this is true? Is that yeah. just something that you arbitrarily believe in? And if you could be wrong about that, how many other things could you be wrong about? Absolutely. Um, and I, I also want to jump, because again, when we were, bef <laughs> when we were discussing the show before, uh, you, you, we, you mentioned that, uh, you emphasized that one of the most important things about this whole, uh, the whole discussion situation is the idea of blasphemy. Right, and I would say this is really the thesis of the whole thing. It's that atheists do not have this, this concept of blasphemy. It's not something that we deal with as atheists. But with religionists, uh, they, they have this, uh, this idea that you can offend some agency um, and that, that upsets them when this happens. And it's explicitly forbidden, at least in the Abrahamic religions, um, I, I, probably most religions. Uh, but I, I would say that's really the main distinction between religious people and non-religious people. Right. Well, well, the thing is, too, and again, uh, I, I'm not a trained psychologist, but uh, when, you, when you offend someone's deity uh, or they perceive their deity as being offended, what, they're really, what, what you're really doing is threatening their, their Weltanschauung, their worldview, uh, and their self-identity in which they have a, a tremendous emotional investment. Right. And you're basically, because, you know, let's face it, um, uh, if you're, no matter how nicely we do it, by our uh, non-belief in God, we're basically saying to lots of people, the things that you hold the most dear, the basis for the, the very basis for meaning in your life isn't real. 
Right. And, and it's understandable that people are going to get upset about that. Right. And it's, it's really just a matter, uh, and I talk about this in much more detail in the right. workshop, but it's really a matter of, of taking on an identity with this stuff. Yes. It's, it's not just that you believe these things. It's, yes. that you are, it's not just that you believe Christianity. It's that you are a Christian. Um, yes. If somebody starts attacking Christianity, yes. it, they, it feels like they're attacking you because they are attacking you if yes. you're talking about your identity. Yes. Um, and so, and, and so how can you, and, and unless you're just so, uh, I mean, uh, I can't, certainly in the Abrahamic faith and Western faith, I, I can't imagine having, uh, uh, believing in a religion and not having your s sense of self completely invested in it or mostly invested in it. Right, I completely agree. And that's really, I would say, one of the first major steps toward becoming an atheist for anybody who used to be religious is that, that paradigm shift in your thinking of starting to see not your religion is true and all other religions are myth, but your religion is what you believe and other people believe other things. And uh, you, you could be wrong, and it's just one of many. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of that very famous saying now that's on the Internet. It was attributed to somebody, I guess, a, a, a techie by the name of Stephen Roberts. Uh, yeah. Um, if uh, um, I contend that we are both, I contend that we are both atheists. Yeah, you just, uh, uh, I just believe in one less God than you do. When you understand the reasons why you dismiss all other gods, and you will understand the reason why I dismiss yours. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, uh, I think that's very valid. I think that's a valid position. I, it's a great quote. It really sums up the entire thing. Um, and continuing on to this, on this, uh, uh, on this vein of, of blasphemy, um, and it, it's, I, I'm sure this is no surprise to anybody who's, who, uh, is, uh, who accepts science uh, as uh, the best explanation for, natu for the natural world. Um, there, of course, is a biochemical basis for why we get upset when our belief systems are, are, are threatened. Right, and I spend uh, a great deal of time in the video talking about this part of it, uh, the blasphemy and the brain, basically it just um, from a neuroscience perspective, what is actually happening in your brain as far as the signals that come in and what happens as far as the different parts of your brain that are activated when you get upset talking about something. It's actually the same, it's called amygdala hijacking and I talk about what that right. is, but it's the same effect um, uh, the fight or flight response when you're being attacked that it, it's it's not it, it is a metaphor but it's the same exact thing when you're being attacked or you are feeling threatened that you're going to be attacked from you know a shark or something like that uh, it's the same thing that happens in your brain when somebody attacks your identity um, as far as uh, what goes on uh, I guess it's kind of the fight or flight response right yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what what happens um, so in any way, we go we in, in, the, in the whole in, in the program. You go on again to do a much more, much more uh, detailed uh, version of uh, amygdala uh, uh, attacking, and um, but uh, what is this? What is you, what do you mean uh, that the key word? What, what you ask? What is what does blasphemy look like? And in this this page here, you start off with you say the key word is sheltered. What do you right. mean by that? So I, I spent some time in the presentation. Uh, in the workshop talking about desensitization and some research uh, in the 1950s about um, treating, uh, clinically treating phobias and how you mm -hmm. can desensitize yourself to irrational reactions like that. So basically, when you have somebody who's been sheltered from being desensitized by not being exposed to certain ideas, uh, I mean, you, you have, you know, uh, I'll just use Christians as an example, they have their own daycares, they have their own private schools, they have their own textbook publishers, they have their own colleges, they have their own TV networks, they have their own radio you know, stations and, and genres of music. They have uh, their own hospitals, they have their own retirement homes. You can the through, Amish, right. uh, can, yeah. uh, their own religious right, community. Sure. Right. You can go your entire life as a Christian without really ever interacting with someone who isn't a Christian. Right. And what that means is the first time that you have an interaction with somebody who isn't a Christian, it's really going to upset you uh, to see something like a tattoo or to see something you know, like a, like a body piercing or things like that, right. uh, just because you're not used to it. And you can desensitize yourself uh, by exposing yourself to these things. And the main point that I make in the presentation is that atheists are desensitized to these things. So when we start talking about uh, religion in a very critical way, um, it doesn't upset us because we're used to it, but it we could really upset them if they're not used to hearing it. So you have to just be aware of that and not, not go 
uh, over them like that. I, I've I've often felt, and and uh, people, other atheists uh, have have expressed the same sentiment to me, is that, uh, and maybe I'm being, um, maybe this is a specious assumption. I don't know, but I get the I get the feeling that that. Uh, uh, as you uh, as you say in the, in the on the list that just the word atheist triggers a response i'm I, I get the sense that in many cases there's this response because on some level they're afraid that we're correct well just uh just having been uh, made aware of atheism is a threat to who they are right um, so yeah it's just something to be aware of right um in any case we we're, we're we're we've we're running out of we're running out of time but I just want to um, uh, basically, uh, why don't we uh, just have a discussion uh, wrap up, which you can also find uh, uh, on, the, on YouTube. Um, blasphemy means different things to different people. Uh, we took, you covered ca the cause uh, amygdala hijacking in the discussion. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, to cause amygdala hijacking, basically you, you challenge your partner. Yes. Uh, and to, if you want to avoid it, um, you do the same thing that you would use to desensitize someone to a phobia. You use these baby steps of exposure to, uh, to what you're talking about. Right. Uh, um, is it a good tool to, um, to uh, point out the areas that where you agree and then indicate how that, how that proves your own point, your own position? Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And there are all sorts of different things that you can use different techniques and to help make your point and get that across and, it, and help in have any a case, productive conversation. I'm so, sorry to cut you off. We, we sure. are running out of time. Uh, again, you can find this discussion uh, on YouTube, and it is a series of uh, American atheists um, uh, discussions. How, basically, how to how to how to have uh, discussions and and uh, on the on YouTube. Uh, it's online. It's interactive. It's free streaming. <coughs> and um, we are coming to the end of the show. Uh, you have been watching Atheist Viewpoint. Um, we have been talking to our Director of Public Relations, Dave Moscato. I've been your host, Dennis Horvitz. Remember, it's Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules. We will see you next week.
from yourself your disdained life and you're scared of hell they've indoctrinated you quite well but we're not falling anymore can't you get free from the jail inside your soldier own mind for 